this channel, I'm gonna be talking about whatever I fucking want. Matt Taibbi, who was once a trusted journalist who is currently independent, is now a shill for Elon Musk. And such a shame too. Today I'm going to criticize Matt for not actually doing the work of an actual journalist. On last week's episode of the Mehdi Hassan show on MSNBC, Matt Taibbi fails to correct the record on his so-called Twitter files report, which has vague claims in his reporting. The key points of his vague reporting would be something I'll criticize Matt for along with him not being able to criticize Elon Musk because he said, I like Elon Musk, which is so bad of Matt for losing his journalistic credibility. You talk a lot about the election integrity project in the Twitter files, which Stanford and the University of Washington founded to monitor attacks on our elections. Um, and you say some stuff about them that a lot of your critics say is not true, and that affects your credibility. You said the EIP was founded in response to the government dropping its proposal for a disinformation government. Well, there you are. We're quoting you on screen. It wasn't. It was formed two years earlier. Uh, you suggest it was government funded, even though during the 20 election, 2020 election that you're covering, it wasn't. Uh, you say they labeled 22 million tweets as misinformation in the run up to the 2020 vote. They didn't. Uh, they got they flagged 3000 election misinformation tweets for labeling. So you were only 21 million nine hundred ninety seven thousand off. And you also um, claim the EIP was let me finish the question. You can come back in. You also claim the EIP was partnered with the government cybersecurity and infrastructure agency, CISA, to censor Twitter. But you mix up CISA, CISA, a homeland security agency, with the Center for Internet Security, the CIS, which is a nonprofit. In fact, you added an A to CIS. I think people can see it there uh, in brackets uh, to make that false claim. It's just error after error, Matt, on just this one That's topic. But the, other, but the other ones aren't. Many Hassan is right, because by looking at this website I just pulled up, it stands for Center for Internet Security, which is not a government company, it's a non-profit company. And the other website I pulled up, which is an actual government company, stands for Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. It's quite obvious if you took the time to look at the internet domain carefully. The, the, no, no, tw the, the 22, 22 million, million number came from their own report? Yeah, where did the, it came from a report in March. Do you know what the 22 million number is, Matt? Can you tell me? Because we checked. 22 million is the number of tweets about election misinformation that were just, that they just mapped. How many tweets were they? The ones they actually flagged to Twitter before the election, 22 million came after the election. It wasn't in the run-up. They flagged 3,000. So you were off. By twenty one million nine hundred ninety seven thousand. Another they said, they said a lot of things. I, I I I stand by my story. You stand by what story? You stand by twenty two million were flagged in the run up to the election, even though that number came in March twenty twenty one, which was after the election. No, that's this came in their report after the election, which was about some to some total of tweets that they counted on the election. What they flagged to Twitter was two thousand nine hundred eighty tweets, I believe. So that's nowhere that's near twenty two million. Come on. Uh, Come on, I've, what? You got something wrong. You got CISA wrong. Why That's did you add A? Okay, Matt, why did you add A in square brackets? Do you understand why people worry about I actually thought that. And why I didn't you fix it? I, I just checked the tweet before I came on air. It's been three weeks since it was flagged to you. Why not fix it? Do you not have editors I at the racket? I, haven't, I didn't realize that until now. Matt, listen, you could have used the Twitter blue edit button tweet feature to edit said tweet but the fact that you kept it up since then is just wild to me. Okay, and what about the date? You got the date wrong when it was found. You said it was founded in response to the disinformation board. That was last year. Well, because Stamos is saying in the, in the video that uh, you know we were sort of created to fill the gaps uh, no, no, that's not, that's not what you say in the tweet. That's not what you say in the tweet. You say, SIO was created in 2018. No, no, no. You say, this is what you say, that. It would, the EIP was created after the public uproar paused the disinformation board. That's wrong. You need to correct that as well, don't you? After the... Uh, That's what no. your words. You take to quote you. After public uproar paused the Orwellian disinformation governance board, Stanford created the EIP. 
that's wrong. Well, uh, that's what they say. I, 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 uh, my, well, you my could check, you, could check, admit- you don't need sources, Matt. You could check the EIP website. It says it was created in 2020. Well, that's the date that I just said. And the, the disinformation board was 2022. Okay. All right. Well, then that is an error. Mehdi Hassan was right, because if you actually take a look at the eipartnership.net website, it says that the Election Integrity Partnership was founded in 2020 as a nonpartisan coalition in, to empower the research community, election officials, government agencies, civil society organizations, social media platforms and others to defend our elections against those who seek to undermine them by exploiting weaknesses in the online information environment. And the Disinformation Governance Board was an advisory board of the United States Department of Homeland Security, which was formed in April to, uh, in April 27th, 2022. So Matt Taibbi should have really looked at the EIP website, which is the eipartnership.net, and he should have at least looked at the Wikipedia page or the DHS page, which is the Department of Homeland Security website. and look at their page to know when that board was created and had he done that earlier right before he just rushed out a a tweet that he knows very 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 little about his journalistic integrity wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have been tarnished Just like that. Would you like to criticize Musk now? No, I don't. I don't particularly want to. Um, I, it, look, okay. I didn't. I didn't criticize him really before, uh, and I think that what the Twitter files are uh, is a step in the right direction. But the Twitter files aren't a good step in the right direction because you fail to note that Elon Musk is a huge problem as to what's happening with Twitter. Um, but it's the same Twitter that he's running right now. I don't, I don't right now. disagree with him. If you want to ask, I, I think this Understood, Matt. Well, I'll ask you a specific one. You, you no, ask, you ask specific. Me no, 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 no. It's not Listen. in bad faith, Matt. Sorry. You it say that Twitter... Is. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish my question. You're saying that he's good for Twitter and good for speech. I'm saying he's using Twitter to help one of the most right-wing governments in the world censor speech. I will criticize that. Will you? I have to do... I have to look at the story first. I'm not looking at it now. Hold on. Not looking at the story, which has been widely reported by everyone but you, doesn't make you a good journalist. That just means you're not actually willing to do the work, which is to find out why this is happening and how this is happening. Hold on, I, I, I posted the story two weeks ago. You tweeted well, at me, know, invite- I don't watch the Mehdi Hassan show. You do, actually you do, because you tweeted at me saying, invite me on the show and I'll tell you my views. Here you are, no, what you, is your view? I, I on, didn't there watch it is. It. You, you there it is, look. Me, so. Yeah, and you said, look, we'll read your words. Why don't you invite me on your show to talk about it since you're so absolutely sure of what I'll say? You're right, I'm not sure. What is your view on Musk working with Modi to censor speech? That's I have what to you ask him you... about the particulars about it. But listen, th- th- this came up the first time. Uh, I think it was Twitter files number six. When when you said uh, after this, th- th- this was a big one that we had done about the relationship between Twitter, the FBI and the DHS. And th- as that story came out, you were giving me a hard time about tweeting through it, I think was the, was the quote. Essentially, yeah. you said... 
You don't. So essentially, you're arguing that this information was not in the public interest, that I somehow shouldn't have done this story that I'd worked hard on uh, because Elon Musk tweeted something. You don't think that story no, was in the public interest? banned journalist. I think if, no, hold, hold on, Matt. If you're doing a story about free speech on Twitter and the head of Twitter bans journalists, yeah, I think most people, by the way, Barry Weiss, your partner in crime on that, your, sorry, your colleague, your reporter, sorry for that euphemism, your reporting colleague, she actually did call him out. So it's weird that Barry Weiss had more integrity on that, some might argue, your critics might say, than you did. The huge problem I have with the so-called Twitter files is that it isn't accurate. It only has information on what happened on Twitter before the Musk era. Had you and another independent journalist be more, be more consistent with respect as to what happening on Twitter, such as Elon Musk tweeting me after to make sure that he gets the most amount of likes and retweets instead of everyone else. So why not do it, Matt Taibbi? Uh, let's just take the very first example you cited in the very first thread, which went mad viral. You wrote, by 2020, requests from connected actors to delete tweets were routine. One executive would write to another, more to review from the Biden team. The reply would come back, handled. Now, that sounds bad, but aside from the fact that the Biden team was not the government at the time, it turns out that at least three, maybe four of those five tweet URLs uh, that you link to, that they link back to non-consensual nude images of Hunter Biden. Why was it wrong, Matt, for the Biden campaign, not the government at the time, to ask Twitter to enforce its own terms of service against people basically posting revenge porn? Do you understand why people question your credibility on this whole project when you omit such crucial context right from the get-go? First of all, the, the, the reason that's important is because the ordinary person can't just call up Twitter and have something taken off Twitter. If you put something nasty about me on uh, on the on Twitter, I can't just call up Twitter and talk to the government liaison whose name I won't mention on the air and say, hey, can you take care of this and have them take care of that? That doesn't work for the ordinary person. The Biden campaign could do it. Donald Trump could do it. Um, but I can't do it. Can you do it? I don't think so. You didn't answer uh, my question. Why didn't you tell us what were in the URLs? Because it, it sounds much worse than it is. When you discover that actually it was simply a violation of Twitter's terms of service, that these were nude, non-consensual images for Hunter Biden, why not mention that? Did you not know? In which case, no. that's kind of incompetent. Or did you know when you were just hiding it from people? Incompetent? Yes, Matt Taibbi. Are you incompetent? Seems like it. I mean, if you kidding? didn't know, if you You're put up... MSNBC. My Did God, you, know? you got six consecutive years of just Great. screw ups of the Russia story. Well, that, well, that was You're predictable. If we're going to do it. predictable. See, Matt, you're obviously wrong because Mehdi Hassan was on Peacock in October 2020 and was not on MSNBC until February 2021. Also, he moved eight years ago to America in Washington, D.C. to work full-time for Ellen this year. Uh, can you answer the question? Did you know what was in the URLs when you posted them? I what was in the URLs. Why didn't you tell us? I don't need to. Because it's, it's really, you don't think it's relevant that it's a violation of Twitter's terms of service to have nude pictures of Hunter Biden up? Look, every time they make a request to, to Twitter, they're doing what, what you're arguing. They're, they're making the, the argument that, oh, we're not we're not actually asking. This isn't censoring. This is just the government pointing out that this That's or the that. email show that you posted. Right, they don't the, demand but, anything, but, do they? They say, can you can you check if this is in line with your terms of service? And those URLs weren't. So I'm wondering why you wouldn't first, mention that. First of all, the government um, I can't even report that yet. All right. The, when they're doing this, it's self-evident what they're doing. And I don't have to make claims about what it is. I can just show you what they're doing. Everybody but you knows. you didn't, Matt. That's the problem. You didn't show the world that the Biden campaign asked for nude yeah, images. Yeah. You didn't. Other people pointed out what those URLs were. You never did. And it, that's the problem, Matt. There's a lot of omission. Tens of thousands of There's things a lot that, of, I, that, I, that I wrote. Am I, I going to describe every single thing that I, I, mean, I published? That was the first Twitter file and the most viral tweet. Okay, so... To address this stupid tweet here, there is no proof on MSNBC.com that Manny Hassan wrote the Hunter Biden story. 
when a hunt, stupid Hunter Biden story came out in October 2020. The Many House Sons show only started on Peacock, not MSNBC. It was only until February 2021 that the Many House Sons show actually started on MSNBC. Do you not get that mind? Because it seems like you don't even watch the Many House Sons show in his early 2021 MSNBC days and his early Peacock days in 2020. So maybe don't be attacking someone's character for what they haven't done. Given that some stories, like the Hunter Biden story, are not newsworthy. Ryan then says that many Hassan's claim was false when he thought many Hassan claimed that the EIP didn't partner with CISA by saying it is now definitively proven that IEP did partner with CISA when that is not the point of the mistake Matt Taibbi made. Mehdi Hassan says, to be clear, Taibbi deliberately and under oath misrepresented a, a non-profit for a government of intelligence agency and suggested a number, another non-profit travel back through time to get 22 million posts labeled as misinformation. It didn't and or couldn't. These are not minor errors. Many Hassan's point was that Mantaibi deliber deliberately added an A to turn CIS into CISA. Mantaibi was thinking that CIS would stand which stands for Center for Internet Security, was working with the EIP. That's false. A major spelling error. Another independent journalist who didn't actually check his own facts. Li Fang says, CIS, or the Center of Internet for Internet Security, is a government contractor that manages partnerships on behalf of the DHS. The two orgs work hand in glove. This idea that CIS is totally separate is totally farcical and belies the way DHS experts influence. You are wrong. Li Fang, you are wrong. The Center for Internet Security is a community driven nonprofit responsible for the CIS controls and CIS benchmarks, liberally organized best practices for securing IT systems and data. And, and sure, the Center for Internet Security makes the connected world a safer place for people, businesses, and government governments through our core competencies of collaboration and innovation. But that does not mean that the Center for Internet Security works for the U.S. government. Only the CISA works for the government. If you even took a good look carefully at the official website, it has a .gov domain, and it also says an official website of the U.S. government. So people like you understand which one is owned by our government.
always double check your spelling and don't blindly say that Mehdi Hassan is incompetent because MSNBC has been working on Russia's story for six years when he was around. Don't ever say it. And stop changing the subject by, di by diverging. Also, always check the name of the company you're referring to on the website before you click or tap tweet so you don't make these errors. If you make an error on your tweet, go back and correct it. And please, criticize Elon Musk. Don't be dismissive. Also, don't ever misuse the bracket. Because in order to regain back the trust of the American people, you need to not lose your journalistic integrity. But right now, you lost your journalistic integrity. Oh, also, don't be a hypocrite. Because by not realizing that Elon Musk blocked all competitors' links on Twitter, such as YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Reddit, which Elon Musk faced backlash around four months ago and reversed course after a few hours at the time, now you realize that when it comes to your stupid stop stack link that Elon lost, that Elon Musk blocked. Matt Taibbi, do better.